Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and I'm here with a new Reactor 5.92 and I'm going to show you some of the new features we have available to us with the mouse area module. So what I have here is a single mouse area that I'm using to control four knobs and um, depending on where our mouse is hovering it'll show us which um, knob is active at any given point in time. So over the next few videos I'll show you how to build this structure and we're going to build it in a way that is highly customizable so you can use it to create a wide range of different knobs. So let's begin with a new ensemble and I'm going to create a macro and place a mouse area inside it. And we want to, in the function tab of the properties, select the always send px and py events. So this is going to ensure we're going to get events out of the px and py outputs even if there's not a mouse button pressed. So this is a new feature in Reactor 5.92. We didn't previously have access to um, this information and we can use it to create a uh, much more dynamic GUI that is responding to the user in uh, just a much better fashion. The PX and PY outputs are measured in pixels. Um, so we have a height and a width of 150 pixels, which means the outputs are going to range from 0 to 149. So we want to create a macro that is going to take this 0 to 149 value and translate it to a range from 0 to 1. So I'm going to create a new macro and we're going to have an x input, a y input, and a size input and declare the size as 150. Um, and so if you decide you want to change the size of the mouse area all you need to do is change the size input to this macro and the rest of our work today should still work. So we're going to take the size, subtract 1 from it, and then um, divide over, or divide the um, x and y values over the size minus 1. So again, the maximum px value is 149. 150 minus 1 is 149. So if this is at its maximum value, it's going to output 1. Um, and obviously if p equals 0 it'll output a 0. So we're just translating the signal from uh, its range of 149 to a range of 1. And we'll need access to these values later on down the line, um, but for now I'm actually going to take them and immediately translate them into something else. And to do that I want to use, I want to create a new macro I'm going to call translate. And this is going to take four inputs. We want to have um, a minimum value. We want to have a range. We want to have um, the step size. And then we want to have an input that's from a range of 0 to 1. And we're going to take that input and we can translate it into any knob or any values that we want. And we can use that to do a bunch of different things, and later we'll even use it to kind of mimic the way that a knob works. So we're just going to use a multiplication add module here, and we're going to multiply the input by the range, and then add the minimum value, and then quantize by the step size. Um, and for now, we're just going to leave the step size for zero. So um, when you're quantizing by zero, it, it doesn't have any effect at all on the input or the output. All right, so we have this value from zero to one that is coming out of our previous macro here. So we want to then take that value and translate it from a range from negative one to one. So in order to do that, we can send the x value into the input have a minimum value of negative 1, a range of 2, and again we can keep this step size at 0. 
And so this will give us a uh, minimum value of negative 1, obviously, and then the maximum value is just equal to the minimum value plus the range. And we can duplicate this structure for the y value. So all we've done so far is translate the x and y values from a range of 0 to 149 to a range of uh, from negative 1 to 1. And the next thing we want to do is with this new, um, these new values from negative 1 to 1, we want to calculate the radius of a circle that would draw through that point and the origin at 0, 0. So radius is equal to, or radius squared anyway, is equal to x squared plus y squared. So we'll simply take the x value and multiply it by itself, take the y value and multiply that by itself, and then add the two numbers together. And that will define the um, radius squared of a circle drawn through the point that our mouse is currently hovering over. All right, so next up, we want to find if this radius squared value that we've just calculated is within a certain range of values. Um, so we're going to create a macro with three inputs. So we'll have the input from the um, x squared plus y squared macro here, and then a minimum value and a maximum value. And we'll just name this macro in range. And by um, modifying the minimum and maximum values on this macro, we'll be able to create a wide variety of different types of knobs. So this macro is simply going to output a 0 if the mouse is not hovering in this range and it'll output a 1 if it is. So I'm just going to use a compare equal module and compare against the minimum value and we'll use a logic or module to see if it's either greater than or equal to the minimum value and then we'll also check to see if we are less than or equal to the maximum value and then we can use a logic and statement to make sure that we are both above the minimum and below the maximum. And we'll be able to use any number of these in-range modules and if you set them up correctly, only one of them will output a value of 1 and be active at any given point in time. So I'm going to split the mouse area into four different pieces. Um, so the minimum value of the first in-range macro is just going to be 0. And then the input to the sex second maximum range is going to be 0.25 squared. So remember that our r value coming out of the x squared plus y squared value um, is squared. So we're just going to square all the other inputs to these uh, in-range macros in order to get the correct values. And our second macro is going to range from 0.25 to 0.5. Um, and then we can have another one from 0.5 to 0.75 and so on and so forth. All right, so finally we want to create a macro to distinguish the outputs of these different in-range modules from each other. So first of all, we're also going to want to multiply the in-range outputs by the mouse uh, over output of the mouse area. And um, since the px and py events will stop sending values once you are not hovering over the mouse area anymore, 
one of these in ranges could say that it's on even when it's not. So we're going to multiply the outputs by a mouse area, um, by the mouse over output of the mouse area. And then we'll multiply, you know, the first in range by one, the second one by two, the third one by three, etc. And that way, um, the single output of this macro will define for us exactly which part of the mouse area the mouse is hovering over if it's hovering over it at all. And so the output of the first area um, multiplication I'm making here obviously is going to be either 0 or 1 and um, the second one I make will be either 0 or 2 and uh, only one of these is ever going to be non-zero at any given point in time. So we can take the output of all of the multiplication modules, add them together, and we'll get a value that ranges from 0 to 4. And that value we can use to control which um, area of the mouse area is currently active, which area that we've defined is currently being used. And um, for the end of this tutorial, we'll just use that to um, control the uh, multi-picture that um, turns on a light on the area that's being hovered over. And next time I'll show you how we can expand upon that to turn each area into its own independent knob. And in a third tutorial, I'll show you how we can um, have one knob be used as a modulator for the other, like um, the way that the mo knobs in Massive are, for example. So I've created a image using Knob Man for this. Um, it's pretty simple to make. Basically, um, it has five frames. Each frame corresponds to one of the concentric circles. Um, that we want to be able to light up over the mouse area. Um, and so that's fairly simple to do with Knob Man. I believe we have a few tutorials out already about it. If you guys really want to know how I did it, I can uh, do a quick tutorial on that, but it's really not very exciting or very difficult. Um, next, we want to turn all these guys monophonic. We want to turn them all invisible. Uh, the only things that we need visible are the mouse area and the multi-picture. We can delete the inputs and outputs for now. I'm going to get rid of the mouse areas um, or the multi-pictures label here. And then we just want to layer these two elements on top of each other, and the mouse area will always take priority. And it doesn't look like the outside circle is working right now. I probably just made a really simple mistake. Yeah, if we hop into the structure, you see I set the maximum value for this to be 0. I meant to set it to 1. Uh, 1 squared is 1, so we don't need to multiply it by itself. And there we go. All right, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. If you guys like this video, please check out our website. Um, I'll be back pretty soon with a, another tutorial to build on top of this one. I hope you guys will check it out.